we live in a world that is busy, right? We have work, we have sp- our kids have sports, we have sports, whatever it might be. We have a busy life. Most people do. So making sure that when we are training our dog, we're optimizing it is super, super important. So I'm going to give you some tips today on how to maximize each training session you have with your dog so that your progress is faster, everything gets better. So let's go ahead and talk about that next. All right, let's go ahead and get this week's episode going. What's up, everybody? I am Jake. I'm from OnDogTrainingAcademy.com. You can check our website out, OnDogTrainingAcademy.com. We have courses on there. We are putting out more webinars. We we now have uh, the capability of doing one-on-one training. So if you have liked what you've been hearing in the podcast or on YouTube, you certainly can jump over to our website and schedule a one-on-one consultation where we can talk and work on any issues you might be having. Um, With that, this week's topic is maximizing each training session. Like I mentioned in the intro, people are just becoming more and more busy, meaning they have less and less time for their dogs. Now, that doesn't fare well for the dogs when it comes to learning, but there are things that we can do to maximize our training sessions, to make sure we're getting the most out of it so that our dog isn't missing out on the training it needs. Because if you have training, bad training sessions, um, and they start to just build up and build up and build up, what ends up happening then is is the learning slows down, the dog's confidence goes lower, the dog's, it just becomes kind of a, a, a a crap show, right? Like we want to make sure that we're having good positive sessions and building on what they did from the time before and being able to enjoy our dog. That's the reason we get them. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, before we get going, if you're watching us on YouTube, please make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can get updates on our weekly podcast. Um, We are also putting out uh, periodically a myths about dog training videos so and that is exclusively to youtube so make sure you subscribe to our channel because you will get uh, notifications when those uh go i'm trying to do those weekly but it might be every other week more realistically but those are going to be another little ad thing that we're going to be doing Um, but if you're on youtube subscribe like this video share this with your friends if you're listening to us on the podcast continue to share this we love the feedback we've been getting we're on facebook we're on instagram uh, you can certainly search for On Dog Training Academy on there. You can also search for Facebook on there. And I will put the um, links to that in, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this, I'll put the links to those in the description as well as on YouTube. I'll put them in there. So before, or without any more chatting about all that stuff, let's go ahead and talk about this week's discussion. And that is maximizing each training session. I think this is so important right? Like I mentioned before, this is so important. Not only do we want results, we want results as fast as we can. Now we are dealing with a living creature. So sometimes results aren't going to happen as quick as we would maybe like, whether that be because the dog is a certain age, is going through certain things, could be genetics, it could be whatever it might be, might be confusion with what you're actually trying to teach them. Um, but we want to make sure we're, we're trying our best. And so here is my, my small little group of, of tips here, what I do, how I build into each training session I do with my dogs or with client dogs. The first thing I love to do is some sort of warm-up. Now, a warm-up usually, and this I do it with my students in classes as well, but, but a warm-up usually consists of something like, hey, let's, let's play the name game. Let's have your dog look at you, right? Let's get eye contact. Let's get focus. Let's work marker training. It's called loading the bridge where you're going to you're gonna use your marker cue, whether you're using a clicker or whatever. You're going to say, yes, treat your dog. And you're going to do that a bunch of times in the warm-up to just remind the dog of how valuable and awesome that command or that, that marker cue is. And you might do some sits, downs. You're just doing these super basic, easy little things before you jump into the actual goal of your training session and I think that's really important as well have a goal don't just be like well I'm gonna put my dog on leash and we're gonna just do a couple things whatever like write down here's what I want to work on with my dog you know I want to work on sits today I want to work on downs today I want to work on healing today so that you don't become so scattered in your training that nothing really progresses 
Now, when the dog gets more experienced and more advanced, yeah, you can do more sporadic training because you're doing more refreshers or reminders as opposed to trying to build onto or or make better uh, certain things. So have an agenda. Be ready to go with that and understand what you're going to need supply-wise and what you're going to um, need to do as your plan so you can roll out. But do a warm-up. Consider it mental stretching like you would with uh, you know stretching like if you're playing sports or something like that. You know, I'm not going to just run out and start playing, like, I I play softball, so I'm not going to run around and just start playing softball, run around the bases, be crazy, doing all this stuff. At my age, no, I'm going to start pulling muscles and doing certain things, so I'm super careful and and, and stuff on making sure I stretch and get myself ready, because then once it's game time, I feel so much better and things go smoother. Same thing with warming your dog up. Consider it mental stretching. The next thing, then, is to start low, um, start in a low excitement setting. Um, especially if you're trying to train like new things, you want to have anything that can take your dog's focus away from you. You need to have that gone. Goodbye. If you have other dogs in the house, put them away, put them in their crates, put them somewhere. If you don't create your dog for whatever reason, should be creating your dog. But if you don't create your dog for whatever reason, then I suggest putting them in another room or maybe leaving, maybe take your dog to somewhere else that, that's easy. Take them to the basement, take them into your bedroom, do something where you can get away from the other dogs and it's going to be less distraction because you need that focus on you. When you're teaching something new, like if I'm, if I'm learning, if I'm like watching or doing something with, with a lot of dog training stuff, right? I've been doing it for so long, it's kind of second nature to me. It's easy. I can have distractions. I can have the radio on behind me as I'm like typing out emails and doing stuff for clients. But if I'm trying to learn how to fix my car or do something like that, and I have to like stare at this computer screen and just really focus, if that music's going on behind me, I can't process. So consider that the same with dogs then. When there's distractions going on, yes, they might be giving you focus, but it's not 100% because of all the other environmental things that are pulling them away. So I definitely would suggest that you uh, you you get to a easy go easy spot somewhere where there's not a lot of excitement. Next thing then is start to step start a step or two uh, lower than where you left off last time. And the reason for that is because you have to assume at least a portion of what you taught your dog is going to be lost the next time you work with them. Now, it might just be a little fraction of a thing, right? It might be, you know, the final, let's say you're working on stays and your dog is up to a minute by the end of your training session, but you had to build it. Well, instead of going, okay, the next training session, I'm going to start at a minute and build off from there. Assume your dog's maybe lost 10 seconds. I don't know. It's just, this is just a fake number I'm throwing out and start at say 50 seconds. All right. Well, we're going to start at 50 seconds. If you do a 50 second stay, I'm going to come out and reward you. Or you could even do a 30-second stay. And I'm going to start easy. And if you succeed and it was easy for you, awesome. We'll jump to that minute and get back to, really quickly, get back to where we ended in the last session. And then we can go beyond that. We can get into a minute and a half, two minutes, five minutes. But you don't want to assume that where you left off with your dog last time is where they're going to be able to start this time. I think that's a big mistake people make. They just assume that since they got to a point in the last training session that it'll be there. Just assume that they're going to forget something, especially if you put days between your training sessions. If you're training every day, maybe, but still even there, I would would assume there's going to be some knowledge loss that you're going to have to remind them. So take a step back and do one or two steps back and just work them back up to it quickly. And usually it goes pretty quick and then you'll be able to fly up. It's guaranteeing or helping to guarantee that it's going to be a successful training session. Um, so remember that. The next thing is build build slowly. Like, don't be in a rush. Again, well, this goes back to what I said in the intro, is we live in a such a fast society right now where we're super busy. We need results now. We need to do this stuff now. We need to also understand when we're working with, and I think I've said this recently in other, in other podcast episodes and, and stuff, but we need to understand that we're working with a living animal that maybe isn't going to be able to proceed as fast as we would like. We need to build slow. I think the whole saying slow and steady wins the race, I think slow and steady is going to set that training in a lot better than just trying to rush through it. If you rush through it, you might skip steps. 
And if you skip steps, that means there's holes in your training that are going to be exposed eventually, whether it be when you go out in public or, or, or something distracting happens, whatever. Take your time with the training. Don't feel rushed. It, it's just going to help you set, you set you up for more success. Um, and then lastly with this is add distractions as your dog can handle it. So maybe you're going to be able to do training. What the rule? I guess I should backtrack. The rule I have is is I'll add distractions to training once my dog understands what I'm saying. Let's say down. Say I'm teaching my dog down. If I tell my dog down and they go right into a down, cool. Now let's add a little bit of distraction and see if you can still process what I'm telling you to do. That doesn't mean I'm going to go from no distraction to taking my dog to a fair. Or taking my dog, having a bunch of people over, having a party and being like, okay, here you go, dog. We're going to learn. And you, you you knew down when there was nothing going on, so you better know it now. Nope, that goes back to building slowly, right? I'm going to slowly add distractions. Maybe the first distraction is just a change in location. We go out in the yard. Maybe that's too much. We go into another room, into a living room. We go where if you have cats, maybe the cats are, are kind of milling around and your dog gets slightly distracted. You go from a completely quiet environment to something with a little bit more noise, not too much. It's always up to you guys to decide what's what's the next level. I can't tell you that. But I think if you add distractions slowly, you're going to be a lot more successful. This goes back into this to building slowly. Slow and steady will get you there faster. Remember that. And the biggest thing, the, the, the last thing, this isn't even a step. This is just my tip to you guys. When you're planning out your training session, and I plan mine out. When you're planning out your training session, what I what I highly recommend you guys do for your training sessions is you set them up for success. I plan my training sessions out going, okay, as best I can. I mean, environments change, things change. But I'm going to look through and be like, all right, is this going to end well? Well, I might look through my thing and go, ooh, this is going to be too hard. Let's make it a little easier. And whether this is just mental preparation, mental... Um, kind of figuring out what you're going to do or you're writing it down. I think this is so important because if you set your dog up for success, if you minimize the failures, failing is okay for dogs. I think failing is a part of what needs to be done and they need to learn these things. However, if you do your best to set them up for success, you're going to have more successful training sessions, which goes to maximizing each training session itself. So this thing did a big full circle. All right, set them up for success, for success, guys. Start slowly, build into it. Take your time. Don't feel rushed and don't don't set a timetable. Don't be like, well, I'm taking my dog up, up north with me tomorrow, so I'm going to teach him to tr- how to heal today. Because if you set a timetable like that, something very unrealistic, not only are you putting a bunch of pressure on yourself, you're putting a bunch of pressure on your dog. And really, in my opinion... The only thing that ha- comes out of those type of non-realistic time timetables is damaging your relationship with your dog. Because if you're upset, if you're stressed, if you're frustrated, your dog will get stressed and it just affects things. So, guys, that is it for this week. Hopefully it was helpful. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a shorter one. I try not to make them suit too terribly long because I understand that, you know, you want to listen to this stuff and get on with your day. So thank you guys for listening. Like I mentioned before, check us out on Facebook and on Instagram and, of course, on YouTube. Um, if you're not already, subscribe to our channel um, and get notifications so that you'll know when the next one comes out. They come out every Thursday at, well, it's midnight, right? Every Thursday at midnight, our podcast comes out, our YouTube channel or our YouTube video comes out as well. So check these things out, guys. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, we'll see you next week.